friends, this is the Cheeky Monkey, and welcome back to Road to Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. Here we are, the final review on the Road to Dark Knight 3 The Master Race, and thank goodness, because we've gone through some real stinkers, haven't we? In fact, they've mostly been stinkers. Kinda sad. Makes me a little worried for Dark Knight 3. Anyways, that's the uh, bright side of things. This is the last review. On the uh, not-so-positive side, we have to review a comic that is absolutely terrible. A comic that is so bad that the reason that I don't have it on my shelf is not because I own it in digital, but because after rereading it for the purpose of this review, I set it on fire. With, uh, with that setup, let's talk about ba All Star Batman and Robin The Boy Wonder. This comic is the absolute worst. It is one of the worst comics I have ever read. Every single shred of goodwill that Frank Miller has gotten from his good comics is just crumbled up, torn into pieces, and thrown into the dirt by the ten issues of this crapnum opus. But before we talk about the comic itself, it's important to talk about the history of the All-Star imprint. DC's All-Star imprint was intended to serve the same purpose as Marvel's Ultimate Comics, to introduce a new generation of readers to its most popular superheroes with <clears throat> stories that were simple, took place in their own small pocket universes, and as such were not burdened by decades of continuity, crises, New 52s, flashpoints, and reboots. The... There were four series planned before the imprint ceased to be. All-Star Batman Robin the Boy Wonder, All-Star Superman, All-Star Wonder Woman, and All-Star Batgirl. However, All-Star Wonder Woman never came to be, nor did All-Star Batgirl. All-Star Superman was the second comic series to be published in the All-Star imprint, Written by the almighty Grant Morrison, creator of some of the most popular story arcs told in the DC continuities, such as the Tower of Babel storyline in Justice in JLA, where the Justice League was in this continuity first introduced to Batman's arch nemesis, Ra's al Ghul, or the Batman and Son story arc in the Batman comics, which introduced the character of Damian Wayne, and written by Frank Quietly. The two would later team up to write and draw, respectively, the series Batman Robin, but I'm getting off topic. And the, of course, fourth comic was All-Star Batman Robin the Boy Wonder. It was actually the first to come out under the All-Star imprint, and also the last. It was announced to great fanfare, but after reviews came out following the release of the first few issues panning it, the publication of the comics became more and more sparse until, instead of completing its twelve-year its twelve-issue run, more than ten actually at ten years after release, it has stuck to ten comics. However, in two thousand ten, DC Comics announced that Frank Miller and Jim Lee would return to the series in two thousand eleven, with the series rebranded as Dark Knight: Boy Wonder. 
the rebrand of Dark Knight Boy Wonder would run for six issues, completing the story that Miller originally wanted to tell. All-Star Batman Robin the Boy Wonder is also set in the same continuity as Frank Miller's other Batman works, called the Dark Knight Universe, not to be confused with the Christopher Nolan films, the Dark Knight Trilogy, which is known as the Nolanverse. The Dark Knight Universe continuity consists of, in chronological order, Batman Year One, All-Star Batman Robin the Boy Wonder, Spawn slash Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, The Dark Knight Strikes Again, and Dark Knight Three The Master Race. And there you have it. That is the history of the All-Star imprint. I have tried to defend this comic by saying, oh, it's Frank Miller paying homage to all those cheesy 80 action B-movies. There's just two problems with that. One, those movies were terrible, that's why they're cheesy 80s action B-movies, and two, why would you want to pay homage to them in a Batman comic? Pay homage to the Tim Burton films, the animated series, the Adam West TV show, heck, even the old movie serials, but not cheesy 80s action B-movies. That's like... They're not connected at all. The writing is atrocious. Batman is... He is not Batman. He is a socio-psychopath misanthrope jerkwad in a bat suit. Robin is... He starts out decent, but then he starts to go a little crazy, too. Batgirl is... No... Jim Gordon, no, Black Canary is perhaps the, uh, the greatest offense of this comic. Instead of being, you know, the Black Canary we all know and love, or being some, you know, slight tweaking of Black Canary that turns out being really interesting and really good, like Arrow's Black Canary, instead she's a Irish bartender. I have no problem with the Irish character, I don't think that there are enough good Irish characters out there, like, um, but, well, she's not a good Irish character. If you want to find a good Irish character, try Shea Patrick Cormac from Assassin's Creed Rogue. Not Frank Miller's idea of what Black Canary should be like. This comic is a mess. It is a train wreck, at least in the writing department. The artwork is beautiful. It is Gorgeous. It's done by Jim Lee, who also did Batman Hush, which is, in my opinion, just a great work. Great art, great writing. Why he decided to do this, I don't know. I just honestly don't. Jim Lee, if you're watching this, thank you for watching. But please tell me, why did you, why did you do this? Frank Miller, if you're writing, if not writing, <sighs> if you're watching this, Frank Miller, why did you write this? All in all, it's a terrible work, but you know what the good thing is? I finally don't have to review any more of Frank Miller's Batman comics until the 23rd. Woo! Let's go party! Woo! That's all for now. This is the Cheeky Monkey. Stay close. Wait a minute. The 23rd's next Monday. Dang it!